For years, PC gamers have dreamed of one thing, desktop power they can carry in a backpack. For decades, PC gamers have been chasing a dream, the raw power of a desktop rig and something you can take anywhere. No compromises, no streaming, just pure local performance. It's been the ultimate goal. And the reason it's finally within reach? A market that's exploded into a $200 billion beast. This colossal prize is fueling a technological arms race, and it's leading us to one tiny piece of silicon. Now, a single chip claims it's cracked the code. Meet AMD's Ryzen AI Max, the processor promising to change portable gaming forever. Meet the contender, AMD's Ryzen AI Strix Halo, a chip that promises to fuse brain and brawn into one, eliminating the need for a bulky graphics card. But promises are one thing. Performance is everything. So we pitted it against a reigning champion, the NVIDIA RTX 4060. The results were shocking. In some games, it's a dead heat. In others, a clear win for the old guard. The final score? The dedicated GPU still holds the crown for now. It's powerful enough to take on NVIDIA's RTX 4060, but does it really deliver the future we've been waiting for? But raw power is only half the story. For early adopters, the dream has a price. And it's not just the $1,300 sticker shock. We're talking about a frontier of quality control issues, missing screws, joystick drift, and customer support nightmares that leave gamers waiting for months. You're paying a premium to be a beta tester. You know, for years, the dream for PC gamers has been pretty simple. Getting the full power of a desktop gaming PC, but in a device you can actually throw in a backpack. We're talking no compromises, no streaming, just raw, local performance. It's been the holy grail for portable tech. Well, today we're looking at a new processor that claims it's finally cracked the code. Okay, let's dive into this. All right, so here's how we're gonna break this down. First up, we'll look at the absolutely massive market that's driving all this innovation. Then, we'll meet the new processor at the heart of it all. We're gonna pit it against its traditional rival in a head-to-head -head battle explore the very real problems that early adopters are facing, and finally, we'll ask, what does this all mean for the future of gaming on the go? So, why does one new chip matter so much? I mean, really, why are we dedicating all this time to one little piece of silicon? Well, it's because the stage it's stepping onto is just enormous. The video game industry isn't just big, it's a global economic powerhouse, and that kind of scale, well, that's what fuels the quest for the next big breakthrough. To put this into perspective, just look at this number. Data from Ampere Analysis shows that spending on games and services just hit a record-breaking $199.4 billion this year. Let that sink in. That's almost $200 billion. I mean, when the prize is that big, you can bet companies are going to pour astronomical sums of money into R&D to grab a piece of that pie. And hey, this isn't some one-time spike. The market is forecasted to keep on climbing, smashing through that $200 billion mark next year. But you know, what's really interesting on this slide is kind of hidden in the fine print. The report specifically calls out that the PC gaming market is expanding steadily, and it's being driven by, you guessed it, new hardware form factors. And that, my friends, is exactly where our story is heading. Which brings us to the hero of our story. Let's talk about AMD's Ryzen AI Max series, a processor codenamed Strix Helo. Now this is a chip with a very, very bold promise, to finally deliver desktop class performance in a truly mobile package, to solve that portability problem once and for all. And there it is. Take a look. This single piece of silicon right here, it's designed to be both the brains and the graphical brawn for a whole new generation of high-performance handhelds and super-thin laptops. The big idea is to completely eliminate the need for a separate, bulky graphics card. But how in the world does it actually do that? Well, it all comes down to something called an APU, which stands for Accelerated Processing Unit. In simple terms, just think of it as a CPU and a GPU fused together on a single chip. Now, this tech isn't brand new, but the sheer amount of power that AMD has managed to cram into this specific APU, that's what's got everybody talking. And one look at the spec sheet tells you exactly why. I mean, we're talking about 16 high-performance Zen 5 CPU cores. For context, that's more than a lot of high-end desktop PCs have right now. And it's paired with a really powerful integrated Radeon GPU, 
plus a dedicated AI engine, an NPU, that's capable of 50 tops. That's 50 trillion operations per second just for AI tasks. So yeah, on paper, these specs are just wild for a mobile chip. But the real question is, how does it actually perform? All right, this brings us to the main event. For years, the rule of thumb has been simple, right? For serious gaming, you need a discrete or separate graphics card, period. So we're going to put this powerful new integrated APU up against one of the most popular mid-range laptop graphics cards out there, NVIDIA's RTX 4060. Let's see what happens. Okay, first up, Alan Wake 2. This is one of the most graphically punishing games you can run today. And wow, right out of the date, we have a total shocker. Just look at these numbers. At 1080p high settings, the integrated 8060S is actually a little bit faster than the dedicated RTX 4060. Now, the margin isn't huge, sure, but the fact that an integrated chip is winning at all is just incredible. All right, next up, let's look at another heavyweight, Cyberpunk 2077. And yep, the trend continues. At 1080p ultra settings, it's pretty much a dead heat, with the AMD APU just barely squeaking by the dedicated card. Seriously, to see an integrated chip keeping pace like this in one of modern gaming's toughest tests, that's something we just haven't seen before. But it's not a total knockout. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the tables turn, and they turn dramatically. Here, the dedicated RTX 4060 just pulls way ahead, showing a commanding performance lead of over 20 frames per second. So what does this tell us? It shows that driver optimization and how a game is built still play a huge role. NVIDIA has had years to perfect its software for a game like this, giving it a powerful home field advantage that the new chip just can't overcome, at least not yet. So when all is said and done, what's the final score? Well, when you average the performance across 24 different games, the data from Hotsport is crystal clear. The discrete NVIDIA RTX 4060 is, on average, about 13% faster, and that's the crucial takeaway here. While the APU can definitely trade blows and even win some fights, the dedicated GPU still holds the overall performance crown for now. Okay, so raw performance is one thing, but what's it actually like to own one of these new gadgets? This is where the story shifts from charts and benchmarks to the real-world experience. And uh, this is where a much more complicated picture starts to emerge for the folks who jumped in early. So this new APU, it's enabling this whole new class of PC gaming handhelds, right? Devices like the One X Fly and the upcoming GPD Win 5. These are the gadgets trying to deliver on that ultimate dream of no compromise portable gaming. The promise is absolutely incredible, but the reality, well, the reality can be pretty harsh. This quote from a user on Reddit kind of highlights a common theme. Horrible experience getting a bad fan replaced two months after purchase, still waiting on it. Yeah, the technology might be cutting edge, but the actual ownership experience can be a complete nightmare, especially when something goes wrong with these devices from smaller, often overseas companies. And look, that's not just one unlucky person. When you start digging through user forums, a clear pattern of complaints emerges. First, these devices are expensive. We're talking over 1300 bucks, easy. Then, buyers are reporting all sorts of quality control issues, like joystick drift or even missing screws inside the device. And then, when they try to get help, they often face what they describe as just abysmal customer service and literally months-long waits for simple replacement parts. Could someone give me some insights that why One X Handled is much more expensive than a ROG Alley or MSI Claw? Just want to justify to myself on spending $1,500 on it. I mean, that question right there just perfectly captures the dilemma these enthusiasts are facing. You're paying this huge premium for bleeding edge performance, but you're not getting the polish, the support, or even the peace of mind that comes with a product from a major brand. It's a really tough pill to swallow. Okay, so where does that leave us? Let's try and pull all of this together and really look at what it means for the future. We are clearly on the edge of a new era for portable gaming, but it's a new frontier that, well, it comes with some serious catches. So if you're in the market today, the choice kind of boils down to this. If you go for a device with the new Ryzen chip, you're getting absolutely unmatched CPU power and the ultimate in portability and efficiency. But a traditional RTS 4060 laptop still offers better overall gaming value. You get more mature software and drivers, and a clear advantage in advanced features like ray tracing, which is what makes lighting and reflections in games look so realistic. All right, so the key takeaways from this whole explainer really boil down to these three points. 
Number one, this is a genuine breakthrough. For the first time, integrated graphics are powerful enough to actually compete with decent dedicated cards. Number two, this power comes at a steep, steep premium, which keeps it in the hands of hardcore enthusiasts, for now. And number three, that lack of polish and support means this is going to stay a niche market until the bigger, more established companies jump into the game. But let's step back for a second, because the big picture here is incredibly exciting. What Strix Halo proves, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is that the performance gap between integrated and dedicated graphics is closing way faster than anyone expected. And that kind of pressure? That's fantastic news for us, the consumers. It's going to drive competition and force everyone, AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel, to innovate even faster. And that leaves us with one final, pretty provocative question to chew on. If an integrated chip can do this today, what happens in a year or in two? Are we witnessing the very beginning of the end for the entire category of mid-range separate graphics cards and laptops? You know, only time will tell, but it's going to be fascinating to watch. So, where does this leave us? At a crossroads. Choose the new chip and you get unmatched portability and efficiency. Choose the traditional laptop and you get better value in mature software. But the real story is the breakthrough itself. The gap is closing, fast. And that forces us to ask one final question. If an integrated chip can do this today, what happens tomorrow? Are we witnessing the beginning of the end for the mid-range gaming laptop as we know it? The race for the future of gaming is on. And the winner is you.